Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Uh, an industrial bit of oddware. This one has a sinister side. Just the tip and only for a minute, mind. It looks like a bearing. Well, this is a very special bearing in that it's one way. Now, how can you have a bearing that only turns one direction? Well, I'm going to show you. It's quite clever, actually. One-way bearings are not particularly ubiquitous until you start looking for them and then you start finding them everywhere. In conveying systems, in uh, printing systems, you want a motor shaft to turn, but you don't want the roller to turn in reverse. Same thing with the Sprague clutch on this guy. This is a zero backlash ratchet. Now, it's impossible to have a moving component have zero backlash or virtually impossible and in this case it does indeed have backlash it's the part and parcel of how it's manufactured and the design it has to have backlash in order to work but there's various designs for these and in this case this will be a ball um, sprag but for the size of bearing, it cannot handle nearly the load that a comparable size deep groove ball bearing can handle. That's on account of these small balls, which there's a joke in there somewhere, but I wouldn't know on account of mine being in my wife's purse. Now this is the ball side and we see it's got a plastic cage. So the uh, rolling elements are, are caged in a plastic assembly. Pretty bog standard there on that side. Now let's look over at the other side. As I said, there's different kinds of one-way bearings. There's um, backed ball, there's ball, and there's uh, sprag. And this, I believe, is a sprag style on account of these balls. There's nothing in there in the geometry to show me that they would wedge themselves in. So this is very likely a sprag ball. So it's almost like there's two there's two mechanical elements in the one assembly. The ball bearing, yeah, here we go. These are the sprags. Now we're into the sprag section. When we're moving in the freewheel direction, the inner race just moves around. And this is the, the sprag section is coupled to these balls, so they're free to move wherever they want to. Now you see these sprags are cammed over and they're preloaded with a little preload spring in order to get them shooting over that way. Now the friction, the friction of this rolling inner race is enough to overcome this small amount of preload to get this guy to imperceptibly cam over to the right. Now when we, when we load it the other way, when we turn it the other way, apply torque in the anti-clockwise direction, imperceptibly that cam moves over. And that cam, because it's lobed, now the it's longer. As we cam it over, it gets longer and wedges itself in against the inner and outer race. We're turning in the freewheel direction. Now we stop the power input and it wants to back drive, say it's on a conveyor. And you see those, especially have a look at that guy right there. You can see it's wedging itself in there. Now you can overcome that. Now in this case, we're spinning the outer race. I don't want you to make the mistake that it stops all torque. It, it'll, it will slip if you overcome its capabilities. So that's how the Sprague works. It's got the strongest uh, back drive mechanism, the strongest lock mechanism of them all. There's also a, uh, a backed roller, which is essentially, it's just the roller is biased by a spring into a, a wedge shape. There's a, there's a ramp there. And in the clockwise or whatever, in the freewheeling direction, the ball rolls down the ramp against the spring force. So the friction, the internal friction in the bearing is enough to overcome that, that spring force, force it down the ramp. It's got plenty of room to move free wheels in the opposite direction. That ball wants to climb the ramp and gets wedged in there. Now, as I said, 
these bearings can be overcome. It's just like a wedge in a door. If you push a door hard enough, that wedge is going to slip. And in this case, with the, with the balls, well, with the sprag, that's the best kind of wedge. It's, it's really wedged in there. With the balls, now you have a ball bearing that's becoming a friction wedge, maybe not as effective. The least effective and yet most ubiquitous is the sprag clutch in your drill. Now, this is interesting because it actually has to lock in both directions. It has to lock in tightening and in loosening. As it happens, I have some of the components, the other components sacrificed to the gods of dirt. What we're missing is the actual rolling elements and the, the outer race, but you can see what happens here. And you can feel that when you tighten up a chuck. There's a little bit of slop there before it engages. So these dogs engage on these, the paws engage on the dogs and in here would be a rolling element and you see this is flat so that's your wedge right there so you're you're free to move a little bit in the middle and then it wedges up it wedges that ball against the outer race in one direction and does the same in the other direction and that's what you're getting when you tighten or loosen your chuck so there you have it sprag clutches uh, one-way bearings and the like Pretty interesting pit of kit. So thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.